From Iga's fiance's shocking split from her coach of three years to Arena Sablenka crumbling to Carolina Muhova yet again, it's been an interesting day for the world's two top female tennis players. I can't help but wonder whether these recent developments will be the deciding factors in whoever will walk away with the year end world number one ranking. Also, some of the top seeds are already in action in Shanghai, and unfortunately for Felix Oje Aliassim, a funny yet pretty sad trend continues. Hey, my name is Christian Bass Knight and welcome to Christian's Court where I cover tennis from all angles. If you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post my next Asian Swing Christian's Court report. Iga's fiance joins her fellow slam champions, Coco Golf, Elena Rabakina, and Naomi Osaka and the Changing Coaches Club after she announced her split from Thomas with Tarowski today. Fiance said on social media, after three years of the greatest achievements in my career, together working with my coach Tomas with Tarowski, we decided to part ways. I want to start with a big thank you in appreciating our work together. Coach Witt Karowski joined my team for three seasons when I strongly needed changes and a fresh approach to my game. His experience, analytical and strategic attitude, and enormous knowledge about tennis helped us to achieve things I've never dreamed of only a few months after we started working together. Our main goal was to become the number one player in the world, and Coach Witt Karowski was the one who said it first. We aimed very high. We headed to every tournament with a clear goal to win it. Together with Coach Witt Karowski, we won many tournaments and four Grand Slams. Coach, thank you. I wish you all the best. I know that you would like to rest after these three years of hard work and traveling a lot and spend some well-deserved time with your loved ones, and I hope you'll get what you need. Due to this important change on my team, I give myself a couple of weeks to start a cooperation with a new coach. I'm in the middle of first talks with coaches from abroad, non-Polish, because I'm ready to take the next step in my career. I will let you know when I make my decision. Iga later clarified that she will be skipping next week's Wuhan 1000 tournament because of her current search for a new coach. So I feel like this coaching split was that personal reason Iga used for skipping the ongoing China Open in Beijing. This split still is a surprise to me because of the success that these two have had in the past three years together. As she mentioned in that statement, Iga won four of her five Grand Slams with Tomas, including three consecutive Roland Garros's and the 2022 US Open. She also had immense success on the WTA 1000 level as she picked up 10 1000 titles, nine with Tomas, and then she won the year end championships in Cancun last year. But Iga has not had the best results since winning the 2024 Rolling Girls Championships. She has not progressed past the semifinal in a tournament since, as she lost third round at Wimbledon, the semifinals of the Olympics, and the Cincinnati Open, and then in the quarterfinals of the US Open. The most crushing loss of them all was to Kim Wen Jang at the Olympics in that semifinal, as she lost to her in straight sets. She still walked away with the bronze medal, though, but I think that if she had won the gold, we wouldn't be getting news of this split. After her US Open quarterfinal loss to Jessica Pagula, I mentioned how Iga's biggest issue comes whenever she plays bigger ball strikers on faster surfaces. And that's why she has struggled to make a non Roland Garros Slam semifinal since winning the 2022 US Open. Her losses are pretty similar too, especially in the slams, as oftentimes Iga seemingly beats herself with just wild erratic errors, especially from that forehand side. She does not know how to properly change tactics, it seems, and it's really shocking to watch her just crumble at times, especially because she's normally so mentally strong and tough. A couple people under my The Biggest Problem with Iga's fiancé videos mentioned that Iga should probably find a new coach, and I low-key thought that that was kind of drastic. I honestly think that WTA players go from coach to coach too soon, and I do recognize that sometimes it's best to have a fresh perspective in your ear, and that's perhaps what Iga thought and maybe she thought that the relationship just ran stale but still I just was shocked because I didn't think that Iga had that bad of a stretch to warrant a split from Tomas. With Coco and Naomi there were calls, definite calls for a change there but Tomas really didn't get those same type of pleas from Iga fans. If anything they had more smoke with Iga's sports psychologist Daria Abramowitz because of their <laughs> interesting relationship and to be honest Daria does not seem like she's actually helping Iga out there that much throughout the pressure moments. In fact literally when I woke up this morning I thought before even checking the news of this by the way that like I wonder if Iga's going to announce this split from Daria soon and that's perhaps the reason why she took that personal you know leave from Beijing. I'll be curious to see whether Daria is still a part of the team now too especially with Iga wanting a non-Polish coach as before with Tomas still in the box 
her team was all, they were all from Poland. But I still do think that unfortunately, Daria will still be in her box as Iga mentioned her in that recent statement. Shiontek previously worked with Pole Peter Sierpatowski for five years and Peter coached her to her maiden slam at the 2020 Rolling Garros Championships. They split in the off season of 2021, a year where Iga did not progress past the quarterfinals at any slam. When she joined with Tomas in 2022, Iga had her best season to date as that year she won two slams and went on that historic 37 match win streak. So low key, maybe this is what Iga needs another reset in order to have another big year in 2025. The question on everyone's mind is who will work with Iga next and she herself does not know as she mentioned that she'll tell people when she finds her next coach. Wim Fazette, Naomi Osaka's former coach is available and he's coached former Grand Slam champions like Victoria Azarenka and Angelique Kerber in the past. Renee Stubbs and Sasha Bayan, a few notable names within the tennis coaching world, also expressed interest at picking up another player to coach too. But I have a feeling that Iga might follow in Coco Golf's footsteps and going with a rather newer name. Tomas will be a hot commodity himself though, as he coached Agnieszka Rotlanska for seven years before working with Shiontek. I'll be intrigued to see if maybe Elena Rabakina snags him up. Obviously, the first thought that comes to mind is that Iga initiated the split, and for sure that could still be the case. But to me, from reading her statement, I wouldn't be surprised if Tomas kind of initiated those two breaking up, as she did say in this in the statement that like now you can kind of go and rest with your family and take a well-deserved break. So maybe Tomas didn't really enjoy the toll and grind away from being away from his family. Perhaps that could be the case too. It's also interesting because Iga has been making strides in her game recently. Notably, notably that serve has been a huge asset for her. And Loki, as I mentioned previously, like she's kind of become a serve bot in a lot of instances, winning a lot of free points and easy points off her serve. But like I mentioned, she still struggles sometimes with, you know, adapting her game style when it comes down to the pressure moments. And to be honest, that might be a mental thing. I don't know if blaming, I don't know, yeah, blaming the coach is the issue or, or the correct thing. But mentally, I think it could be something with Iga and Tomas could be telling her the correct things to do. But Iga simply, it, all, all, at the end of the day, it's up to the player. And Iga just simply might not be making her those corrections herself. It looks like we'll next see Shiontek in about a month at the WTA Finals in Saudi Arabia, where she is the defending champion. I thought that it was interesting, though, that she skipped basically two 1,000 tournaments because of a coaching split. This is not common, and players typically play on whenever they're going through a coaching split. But that's because they also have have someone else in their box like a secondary coach to help them along the way but the closest thing to like a, an assistant coach would be her hitting partner Tomek who is another pole it's kind of peculiar to me that they wouldn't just come to an agreement that after the WTA finals they wouldn't work together but that they just stick it out for the rest of the year them splitting so close to the end of the year but not quite the end of the year with there literally literally being now one tournament left is an odd decision to me. Another thing too, I think it could have been more beneficial for Iga to add another voice to the box instead of parting ways with Tomas, but sometimes coaches just wanna be the sole head honcho and that could have been the case for sure here with Tomas. Now, Sviantec's Wuhan withdrawal gave Arena Sabalenka an opportunity to grab the number one ranking before the WTA finals, but unfortunately for her, that opportunity escaped her grasp after she fell to Carolina Muhova 6-7, 6-2, 6-4 in the China Open quarterfinal. Sablenka was riding high on a 15-match win streak after she took the titles in Cincinnati and New York. She was playing very well in Beijing as well, and to be honest, she really should have won this match in straight sets. The 5-4 game in the opening set was a big missed opportunity, as first at 30-all, she had an opportunity, a good chance for a forehand winner, but she hit it right back at Muhova, who then finished it off with a volley winner. It would have given her a set point, but then she still had two set points later on in the same game, but the forehand, like it did throughout most of the tight moments in this match, let her down badly. She missed two makeable forehands, first off a second serve return, and then a routine rally ball. I also feel like if Sal Blanca really locked in for the tiebreaker in the opening set, she could have won it, but to be honest, it seemed like she didn't really want it as bad as Muhova did, and that's ultimately why um, Carolina took it. She was just solid and took advantage of Sablenka's low-key like mental lapse and little dilly-daddling. Now, Arena did well to lock in, though, for the second set, and she broke Muhova twice, just playing, honestly, excellent tennis. I have no notes for her there. She got the first break of the decider, and considering how Sablenka had it been broken, for the entire match at that point, I thought, you know, it should have been the W for her. But in that 4-3 game where she was serving, Sablika conceded the break and not a single Muhova winner was struck. Carolina won all her points from Sablika errors, 
whether it be from Smothered Volleys, Miss Easy Forehands, Double Fault, and Errant Backhands. Then at 4 all, Sal Blanca missed three very makeable returns to eight Mohova to get the love hold, and then Sal Blanca basically broke herself at love to give the match away. Mohova only hit one single winner from 4 3 on, which is this just shows you that Sal Blanca literally kind of gifted Mohova the match on a silver platter. Losing to Mohova is not a bad loss at all. Carolina is very talented despite not being seated in this tournament, and she played solid throughout out especially in that first those first and third sets and while Sal Blanca really could have won those two sets the Czech played the big points better and just kept the pressure on and ultimately Sal Blanca withered under that pressure but it's the way that Sal Blanca lost this match that irks me because she completely crumbled and getting herself broken at love is simply ridiculous when she hadn't gotten broken up until 4-3 in the third set. Like, that shows you it's just a pure mental thing. She lost the last 10 points of the match, y'all. And it's literal PTSD from the Rolling Girls semifinals from 2023, where she had match point at 5-2, but ended up losing the last five games of the match just due to her gifting the match away. Muhova really didn't have to do much. She remained solid, and Sablenka lost the match herself muhova just honestly seems like she has some type of voodoo over arena because it's just it just only seems to happen against her now formerly it happened you know in the big pressure moments against a lot of players but against now it's only against muhova who now owns a three to one head-to-head -head advantage over the belarusian very lucky that carolina fumbled that u.s open semifinal to jessica pagula because if she made the final to play sabalenka Arena might be sitting with two US Open runner-up plates. If Arena doesn't end up with the year-end world number one ranking, this match for sure would be one of the ones that'll keep her up at night. Anyways, focusing on the players who are still remaining in the China Open, Muhova next faces Kenwin Jang, who had a battle on her hands, taking down 17-year-old Mira Andreva, 5-7, 6 love, 6 4 in their first career meeting. Looking at this semifinal matchup between Jang and Muhova, this would be their third meeting, and the head to head is currently tied at one apiece. Both of their previous meetings were on clay and both went the distance. As Jang, she beat Carolina in a recent meeting at the Palermo Open Final with a score of 6 4, 4 6, 6 2, but Muhova won their first ever clash, which was in the opening round of the Madrid open which was by a score of 1-6-6-3-6-4. I honestly think that the hard courts might favor Muhova a little bit more in this matchup although Jang will have a big asset in having the full crowd support there behind her. Muhova is playing very well for sure but she has her moments where she cools off like we saw against Sabalenka. However unlike Arena I think that King Win will take advantage of that potential Muhova lapse to reach the final. Lastly, briefly highlighting some of the men in Shanghai, a few second round matches were completed and there weren't really any big surprises. A few seeds did lose. First, Tokyo champion Arthur Fies, he bowed out in the opening round to Roberto Carballes Baena in two tiebreak sets. He played a lot of tennis in Tokyo, so he obviously was not at his best, but it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to win because if he did, we would have gotten another battle of the biracials between him and his doubles partner, actually Ben Shelton. Shelton, though, himself looks good. He got a solid straight sets win over Denis Shapovalov. Stefano Tsitsipas got revenge over Kenny Shikori, who beat him earlier in the year in Montreal, beating the Japanese man here 7 6 6 4. And he would not be playing Felix Auger Aliassim next in the third round. Instead, Tsitsipas would face 74th ranked Frenchman Alexander Mueller, who dominated Auger Aliassim 6 3 6 2. Now I'm laughing because. I'm honestly going to need Felix to just log out of his Twitter account before he plays matches because he keeps setting himself up badly with his posts and his captions. Yesterday, he tweeted, it starts tomorrow, and I just knew that the tournament would end tomorrow for him, and it indeed did in pretty brutal fashion. Then at the U.S. Open, he tweeted this picture of him with the caption, on my way to round one, just hours before he took the court to play his first round match against Jakob Menzik. Felix didn't even win a set in that match against Menzik. In all seriousness though, Felix just needs to get it together. Aside from the Davis Cup and Olympics where points were not even awarded, Auger Aliassime has not won a match on the ATP Tour since Cincinnati. In fact, that last win in Cincinnati came against Casper Ruud, who was also deeply in the trenches. The Norwegian extends his losing streak to four after falling to qualifier Alexander Vukic four and four. That is it for this Asian Swing Christian Court report and let me know in the comments your thoughts on Igor Sviantec's split from Tomas and whether you think it was the right move or was it premature. By the way, who would you like to see her partner with? 
Also, will Arena Sabalenka bounce back from now her third consecutive Beijing quarterfinal loss and ultimately attain the year-end number one ranking? Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell again so you're notified whenever I post my Beijing final preview as both Coco Golf and Bedosa take on each other in the semifinal. And then, of course, there's Jang and Muhova. Thank you for watching and for your support, and I'll see y'all next time here on Christian's Court.